So this belt that we have here today is roughly $5,200. Roughly $5,200. Hi, I'm Jimmy. I'm a technician with Canada Computers and I will be building a PC for you guys today. So we can also diagnose your existing systems, like let's say you have a computer that is not acting the way it should be. You can bring it into our store. We'll take care of you and take a look at your PC. We also um, do that for laptops as well. So common mistakes I've seen, um, people using the wrong screws. Um, it really helps to just, you know, read the manual even if you've done it before. It's, every case is different. Every part is different, so always read the manual before you do any 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 sort of building. Yeah, so we have the Intel i9-13900KF. We're gonna pair that with the Asus Z790P Wi-Fi motherboard. We also have 16 gigs of DDR5 at 5200 mega transfers per second. We also have a 980 Pro, one terabyte by Samsung. To power it all, we have the Asus ROG Thor 1200 watt. To cool the CPU, we have the Lian Li a Galahad AIO 360. And for the graphics card, we have the Asus Tough RTX 4090. So this build here is roughly $5,200. All right, so let's get started with the build. So we're gonna start off with the motherboard. Um, uh, so the first thing we do is gonna install the CPU. Yeah, so this is the Intel i9-13900KF. So it's gonna install into the motherboard first. Um, generally, you leave the cover on because you don't want to accidentally damage any of the pins. So there's a little uh, triangle on the CPU right over here that lines up with the triangle on the cover here. So you want to make sure you put the CPU in the right way. You don't want to accidentally put it in upside down or anything. And the plastic cover will just pop off by itself, so there's no need to pull it off. So next, we're gonna do RAM. So for the RAM, there's a little notch here that you want to line up with the motherboard so you don't make sure you put the RAM in upside down. And on most motherboards, it is labeled. So you want to put it into, for this one, uh, A2 and B2. So that'd be the second slot and the fourth slot. You want to make sure there's two clicks to make sure the RAM is fully seated. Otherwise, it might not post or it might not be stable. The next thing we're gonna do is install the SSD. So for the SSD, um, if you only have one or your primary one, you wanna make sure you put it on the top slot because that's the one that shares, that goes directly to the CPU. So the motherboards do come with these tiny little M.2 screws and you make sure you don't wanna lose them because they're different for every motherboard and you don't wanna have to hunt those down. So the drive we have here is uh, 2280. So you wanna put the the riser in the 2280 slot and then make sure you use the included screw to hold the SSD down and then you can put back the uh, heat shields. And that's it for the motherboard. So now that we're done with the motherboard, we're going to put everything into the case. So for that, it's best if you lie down the case flat. Um, it's a little harder to put the motherboard in when the case is standing up. So the case we have here, this is the ROG Helios. It's a full-size tower, which means you can fit a lot of uh, big parts like the 490 we have here today. So the first thing you do, um, you have this little IO shield here. Not every motherboard comes with this now, but some still do. So you want to make sure you install this on the back of your case. So you want to line up the holes with the motherboard. As you can see, everything down here is lined up here. So just put it like that. And when inserting the motherboard, you want to be careful that you don't um, bend any pins. So after you insert it, you want to check the back to make sure that there's no pieces of metal inside the actual ports themselves. 
So we're just gonna use the included screws with the case to screw in the motherboard. Now you don't wanna put too much pressure on the screws because you might actually damage the motherboard or even the threads for the screws. Uh, make sure all the holes line up before you actually start putting screws into the motherboard. That way you don't have to take it apart and do it again. So after I put the motherboard in, I just like to do the wiring up first, anything from the case to the motherboard. Now, so we're removing the uh, shroud to do all the cabling. because These come off. Most cases don't have this feature. This is actually a really nice feature that I like. So next, I'm just gonna plug in, like pre-plug in the uh, power cables for the power supply. So it makes it easier to install things like the water cooler and the graphics card easier later. So next we're gonna install, or install the water cooler, the uh, 360 AIO. So since it's a 13th gen, we're gonna be using the 1700 bracket. As you can see on the actual bracket, it'll say what it fits. This is LGA 1700. Uh, so that's compatible with any of the uh, 12th or 13th gen motherboards for Intel. I'm just pre-installing the fans onto the radiator here, just to make it easier to install into the case later. And you always want to do uh, corners first, so like star pattern when doing any sort of screwing. You don't want to do like one, two, three, four, because that'll make uneven pressure. Okay, so now I'm gonna install the water cooler into the case. With this case specifically, or some cases, you actually get a bracket that can be removed to make it easier to install the water cooler. So I have installed the uh, fans and radiator to the top of the case, as you can see here. Uh, next, I'm going to be installing the block onto the CPU. Uh, so for most people, what they do is a little rice grain on the CPU here. For the 13th gen, I have to put a little more because the die is a little bigger than the older ones. So maybe like a long rice grain is a good just like with the fans you want to install the screws in a diamond pattern like a star pattern so it evenly spreads out the, uh, the double paste. Yeah, so uh, we have finished installing the water cooler and all the cables for the power supply, as you can see. So now we're just gonna plug into the, the power supply into the case. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm removing the covers to take the GPU in. I've already pre-wired all the cables for the graphics card. Yeah, I installed the power supply um, and all the wires for it and put the cover back on. So now I'm just gonna install the graphics card and then plug that up and we should be good to go. So the 4090s all use a new PCI-5 uh, connector for the power. So instead of having all four of these cables plugged into it to make it all bulky, they have reduced it all to a 16 pin connector. That looks like this. So it takes all four of those cables and puts it into one. It's a lot nicer on your graphics card. Make sure to always peel the plastic stickers off uh, when installing, because if you don't, they could heat up and fly around in your case, which you really don't want. So 
So once you see it click, then the card is installed. So with these 16 pin connectors, you gotta make sure like really, really carefully that you put it in all the way until it stops. Cause if you don't, you could cause the very infamous um, heating up and melting of the cables. There's a little click at the end when you plug it in all the way. But once it's in, All right, so we have finished the assembly of the build, and now we're gonna power it up for the first time and hopefully everything lights up. Looks good. So thank you for watching, my name is Jimmy. Um, you can catch me at the North York Canada Computers down by Young and Steels. If you want any builds, you can always visit our store and talk to one of our many specialists to have your builds uh, spec'd out and built for you, just like this. <laughs>